This is David from Electric Teaching, and I'm about to give the Star Catcher Part 10 lesson, which is to finish off the work with multiple targets using arrays. So right now I've only got five targets blitted to the screen, but they are nicely blitted. They're not moving because we've commented out a lot of the movement. So um, we're going to come down here, and we're going to start working with the stuff that we commented out last time. For instance, this if target visible true. Well, before we start doing a target visible true, we've got to set up our target visible array. So coming back up to the top here, tabbing over, I like to give myself a little note of what I'm doing. This is the target, oops, target visible test, um, or actually setup of the array. Okay, so same idea as before. We're going to load up. Uh, basically 10 trues or however many trues we're going to use. In fact, I'm going to change my target number to 10 because that's kind of the number I like to think about when I'm working with this. So we got target number 10. So for I in range um, of target number, again, however many we have, then, oh, forgot to create the array. I tend to do that. I get so excited about making the entries for the array that I forget to actually create the array very similar to the way we created it above here. I'm going to create a variable, well, same variable as using before, but I'm making it array. Target visible, okay, is equal to an empty array, bracket, bracket. Um, now, come down here, and in our for loop, we will append a, uh, a bunch of trues into it, basically. So we can do this in one line. I believe we can do this in one line. So target visible and what I'm going to say is dot append, because there's absolutely nothing in there right now. So append, and in parentheses, what do I want to append? Basically, true each time. So I'm going to use the capital word true. That should turn it purple. Um, that is really all I need to do to create a target visible array. And now I've got, if I have 10 targets, I've got 10 trues lined up in this so that as the targets are taken out, depending on which target, again, we're going to go by the ith target, the, depending on which target we take out, that one will have its own effect to it running the if statement down below. At the same time here, let's change the way we're running the speed. So down here is where we've set up the speed. Let me get rid of some extra lines we don't need there. Um, so right here, here's our speed command, this line right here. We're going to take something very similar to this. I'm going to go ahead and just use this area. I'm going to now set up the speed array. So we're going to take speed that was a single variable, or in this case, a tuplet of, of information here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take it and make it equal to now an empty array. I will delete this line below here since that's working with the single variable idea. Very similar to the position. This is two loops, two for loops, for i in range target num then append something to append a uh, empty bracket to speed basically so speed append parentheses bracket bracket close parentheses now another loop just like we did for target position i'm kind of looking up here at my target position right now as i'm typing just to make sure i don't make any latent mistakes so 4j in range of two just an x y coordinate so it's just two elements we will take the speed We'll take the speed, and we will set it to be two different um, uh, uh, random numbers to control the xy speed. So kind of like a slope. I'm controlling it with an xy slope. So I'm going to say of the ith one, append to it. So this will be the first entry in the first entry of this array. It's the zero entry, technically. So append parentheses, and I'm basically just going to steal this line right down here. I'm going to steal this line down right there. So now I've got any number between 1 and 5 multiplied to my game speed. I'm going to slow down my game speed a little bit here. I've got it set to 200. I'm going to set it to 100 for now just to, so I can see things a little bit clearer. This is exactly how you would change your speed if you, run it, you want it to run faster or slower in general. It's one single variable change the way we designed it. So we do game speed times random integer, so that's 100 then times anywhere from 1 to 5. So my, my, my speed changes will be anywhere from 100 to 200 to 300 to 400 to 500. Close the parentheses and double check. I have two opens and two close. That looks good. 
So the first time through J, it gives it some random number. That'll be the X speed change. And the second time through J, it gives it the Y speed change. So now we've got the speed array set up. We don't need this speed command. That, that, that line was for when we had a single variable. So I'm going to delete the old speed line. Okay, we'll leave score the way it is. Now we're going to come down here and for the if statement here. Let's take out, we may not even use this if statement, so I may be redoing all of this, but let's just uncomment it for now. <clears throat> and I'm going to be referring down here. I'm going to be looking at how I made the, the, the actual targets move the first time through. Um, now I'm going to be looking and trying to do that within this, this 4i in range of target number. So one of the first things I've got to do is I'm going to be using seconds in many different places. I'm actually going to hopefully make a, a second uh, tick uh, uh, timer for our screen as well. So I'm going to be using that variable that's counting off the seconds between clock ticks. So I want to cut it from this line. And I just want to put it right up here, like basically at the start of the true, so that the first thing we do is we get a quick little calculation of how many ticks it's been since the last time we've been through and we'll use that seconds in the speed changes down below. So everything else is good. We're blitting the background, blit the player, blit the score, um, update the score, then blit the score. That's good. And now for I in range, okay, now we only want to run and blit stuff if it's visible. And I only want to update the positions if it's visible. So I'm going to hit return here, and I'm going to redo this kind of the if statement we've got going below. Slightly different, though. Because if target visible, target visible is now not a single value, not true or false. It's got 10 different values in it. So I have to say specifically, of the ith one that we're looking at at this time through the for loop, is that one double equal true? If that is true, double equal true, and I really don't need the double equal true. That's kind of weird. So I'm just going to do if this, because this is actually true or false. So it's a little bit redundant to have double equal true. I do that again for teaching moments, but as I get further into the code, I try to show you a little bit uh, more professional look to this. So if target visible is true, then, well, for this ith one, I do want to do all this stuff, but a little bit different, but I need to update the positions. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm just going to copy this position change down below that we were using in the old if statement. I'm going to hit return. It should be tabbed in for this if statement. I'm going to paste in those two little target positioning commands. So now I'm going to just carefully tab things over so that they're all properly lined up. Again, Python uses the indent instead of a lot of extra syntax, and so you've got to respect that. Now, target pause is not a single a variable with a, 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 a tuple, basically a string of a couple characters. It's now got to know which target we're looking at. So you got to say target i, i, I guess, or the whatever one we're looking at. Then inside of that target, what is the x co command, the x location of it? So this is the way we call out um, the double array situation, the two-dimensional array situation. So I say which one, which target we're looking at, then its x coordinate. Speed was designed the same way, so we also need the bracket i in front of that add on the ith speed x change multiplied to seconds to control the timing of it. So I am now going to simply change all of these to have the i command. Same idea here, but the reason there's a 1 there is because we want the y coordinate, and so both these have to be 1, so we're using the same y coordinate every time. Now, I want to use a temporary variable here called target image like we did before, and I'm going to upload the target, so that's still the same. So it grabs the target image, throws it into this temporary variable from the array called target image. You can tell we're grabbing again the x and y coordinates of the target position that we just incremented above. And now we're going to blit all of that. So this if statement down below does not need to be here anymore. We're going to delete it. And I'm noticing I'm going to delete the else statement, which mean, reminds me we've got to do the else. So what if this is else what if this is else it's false right and if it's false we blitted it to the lower right hand corner so i'm going to do a very similar action but i have to do these same three lines so or the, excuse me this one line down here so i know what target i am blitting on the else statement remember if this is true this stuff is red up here but this is not 
And if it's false, I won't know that target image is that target eye because it won't be read. It won't read the true part. It'll only read the else part because it was false. So I have to reassign the target image or assign it for new in a sense, and then do the exact same screen blitting. But I want to tell it where to go in the X. X, let's just make it the far right hand side of the screen. So the far right hand side is width number. And then let's just take off maybe 50 pixels. You can make that part of your own decision later. For the Y coordinate, we're going to use a way of distributing the Y coordinate based on which eye it is. And so I'm going to use the target, uh, a, a spacing trick that I've used before, I believe, in the setup of it. So up here, I've used a target space somewhere when I, when I loaded all the targets up so that they spaced out nicely. And I got to figure out where I did that. So target position, target pause, there it is, target space, and there's the calculation target space. So I'm going to use that. This is a number of, I think we calculated it to be about 30. It was 40 for this if it was 10 stars. And then minus 10 is, makes it 30. So um, we're going to use that spacing in the Y placement of the else statement. So basically, go down to the bottom of the screen and take the height. And then I don't want, I want to use the I. Remember, I is going from 0 to 9, 10 elements with 10 targets. Um, so I'm going to have it go start at, um, take the height and subtract off to move up the screen, I plus 1. That means I won't start at 0. So I plus 1 means I'll start at 1. And I'm going to multiply that to my um, target space uh, variable that I have up there. i got to actually use the multiplication symbol. Make sure you put that in. And now it's going to basically distribute it based on the space and also based on which eye it is. So this won't happen like a real game where it'll line them up in the order of that you hit them at the bottom right. It'll kind of line them up based on which eye we're looking at. I think you'll get that when you see the game play out. We're going to come down here. Right now they won't bounce off the screen. Let's make them bounce off the screen. So I'm going to uncomment this. I'm going to uncomment this. And this is a very easy change. Very similar to before. i got to run a loop. So I'm going to say for i in, again, in range, nothing new here, target num, close parentheses, put a quote in. I need to tab all this over. A neat little trick is if you highlight the whole thing and hit the tab button, it tabs it over. You could also go up to format and say indent region. Now, if target, remember this target pause is not one little tuple. It has got an array with multi-dimension array. So I'm going to specifically say of the ith one, just like I did before. In fact, and I'm going to use this in a lot of places. So I'm going to copy it. And now just everywhere I'm using that one-dimensional array that's now a two-dimensional array, the speed, used it in the speed, used it in the target position. So all of these need the I information first so we know what target we're looking at before we mess with the X or test the X and Y locations of the target. So I'm pasting all of these little bracket I brackets in. So now they'll bounce off the screen no matter what target it is, and it'll always be specific to the target. Hopefully everything's going to work here. Let's test it and run it. I'm going to save and run. I notice I don't have the collisions going yet, but that's an easy fix. I'll do that in a second. And I have an error. Do get errors once in a while. Oh, and this one crashed it. Give me one second. We'll fix. Sorry for the pause. Um, I actually like running things and have them fail so you can see how I go and fix things. So I look at this as a teaching moment. Forgive me if it's a little bit too slow for you. So I caught that, and, and actually the shell told me. I watched the shell as it popped up. So over here the shell popped up an answer that I didn't spell target very well there. And I have a feeling that you all saw it as you were watching the video and probably tried to tell me but couldn't. I know, I know, I'm silly. I also found out something else. I forgot to blit it down here. So with the blit up here won't be registered down here. As I said, it won't be, the program won't read both parts of this if statement. So I actually am just going to copy it so I don't make another typo here and paste it down there. Hopefully this works. Let's do a save and a run. And again, I got another error. Okay, I'm having some spelling errors. I've been teaching all day, so I'm a little tired. Please forgive me. I misspelled target visible right there. Control S, F5, and now. Okay. Stars are bouncing around. 
most of them are going on different types of slopes and stuff. Uh, we're going to work on that random integer trick and try to even make it more exciting. But at least they're all staying on the screen. They're bouncing around. Uh, my player moves. It doesn't run the collide. Let's quickly add in the collide. That'll only take a quick second here. So I'm going to close it. And down here, I'm going to uncomment the collision test. And this actually won't take but a second. We are going to uncomment it. And very similar to before, I need to paste in, oops, I need to paste in that bracket I bracket on each time it's using target position or declaring target visible false. So it needs to be I, in the which it needs to know which target based on which loop. And if I don't have this in a for loop, then it won't be testing it accurately. Um, so that way it tests it for every single one. So just like before, it's for I in range target num. Hopefully I don't misspell something here, kind of double checking it. I'm going to do the highlight this whole thing and tab it over. I do want the score to increase. I want target visible of the I one I'm looking at to be false. Target positive, that doesn't work. I need target positive of which one, the i one. And it does have two dimensions in it, and this is set up nice, except I don't want it to just, yeah, actually I do want it to get it off the screen and they can all pile up in the same place. Save, run, and now when I collect them, let me move around. It's actually kind of hard to play the game. We're going to move it to a mouse command here in, a, in the next lesson. But using the keys, kind of old school, and I like to think I'm more old school on this. Oh, and i got to be good at pull and try to catch that. And you can see they all lined up nicely over here um, and are spaced out nicely the way they started out, started over on this side. So to make your game a little more unique, you can put this anywhere you want, play with the width and height. Hopefully you're enjoying my Star Catcher game. This is close to the end. I will put up a little timer next and give you the trick on how to use the mouse. And I think using the mouse would be very cool if you're looking at making games to go towards the Android or iPad market. Thank you very much.